<laughs> so because of that, um, really what, what this is, these are, these are stories coming out from the Colorado Community College. And um, do you, does anybody know what percentage of students get admitted to the Colorado, um, to the Colorado Community College system? Anybody have a guess about what percentage of students who apply are admitted? Yes, Kath, Kath got it right. Hey, Kath, thank you for being here. 100%, um, that's what community colleges are. Um, we we admit 100% of the best students. And because of that, we really have a mission to be relevant, whether whether that, that means culturally relevant or like you may have seen some other sessions today, generationally relevant. Um, we, we have a mission to meet students where they're at. And we have three panelists today who, who are exemplars at meeting students, at meeting students um, where, where they're at. So this was not the order we were originally were gonna go into, that we were gonna originally do, but Chuck, could I have you go first? in telling how, how you create a sense of belonging with your students. And, and we're very excited that um, uh, we have Chuck Roy, who is business faculty at the Community College of, of, of Denver. And, and I have to say, even though I do not work there, the campus that he is on is my favorite campus. And it has nothing to do with the fact that they have a brewery on their campus, okay? Uh, yes, we do have a brewery <laughs> on our campus. I know right where it is, and generally I'm aware of my distance between me and the brewery. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Chuck Roy, uh, old school stand-up comedian, alumni from the Community College of Denver. I went back to school in my 40s uh, at the encouragement of a dean. I was teaching our comedy classes here um, got my MBA and uh, am a full-time business professor. Um, so uh, what I would like to talk about today are some of the programs that we've done to meet students where they are. Um, and congratulations to Kath for getting the question right. Um, I think a mark of pride is that we do have that 100% acceptance rate um, and that that uh, generates a different uh, style of teaching than, say, our four-year colleagues uh, may be used to. Uh, what you're looking at on screen is, uh, that's uh, me to the left, uh, and then to the right uh, is my boss, Dr. Cheryl Smith. Uh, we have a nickname of the dynamic duo, um, and uh, here's us in action at something called the Monster Mash Party, uh, a party for academic planning. Uh, so we understood that our students did not have an academic plan. We have all sorts of tools for students to have an academic plan, uh, yet we had research and data that showed they did not have an academic plan. Uh, being an event planner myself, when I heard the request for we should put on events to get people to complete their plan, uh, Cheryl and I created the Monster Mash. Uh, and so we uh, got some snacks. Uh, if you want students to show up, feed them. And uh, we invited advisors and uh, students were able to work on their academic plan. We even had advisors speaking in Spanish uh, as one of my business students uh, had parents who wanted to come in and meet the advisor and uh, there was a, a language barrier. So we arranged for a translator and uh, advisor and uh, it was probably one of my favorite moments from the party. Uh, it was seeing our dean just hang out and talk with the parents. Um, so these are some of the things we've done. Our Monster Mash event had a 79% retention rate. We've done things like switch to seven and a half week classes. Some are in the evening. 
Um, I'm working very hard to no longer teach the Friday night, summer Friday night class at 530. But if I have to, I will because I believe in the mission. Folks in our 530 classes are uh, working during the day trying to get their degree at night. And uh, they have the capacity to take an accelerated class uh, and uh, wrap up the class rather than 15 weeks. Uh, they do that in seven and a half weeks. Uh, you know, we have some data that says businesses are asking us to teach the growth mindset. The students asked us to teach SMART goals. So as I reinvented the introduction to business, we added SMART goals and durable skills training. Um, these are our students. They just won the Georgia State uh, International Business Case Competition. Uh, that's first place, second place, and third place on screen. We swept that thing, and I'm still bragging about it. But I want to ask you today as educators, is which one of the three students stopped getting their paycheck during the middle of the semester? Who had a paycheck disappear uh, and no longer be able to be cashed. And that's, I think, one of the reasons I chose this photo is one of the students in this photo has that story where uh, all of a sudden it was one of my all-stars uh, where I noticed that just this student has checked out and has their focus on something that isn't school. And uh, through training like the AQ training, I asked the student what's going on, and they told me about their paycheck scenario. And I was able to bring them down to our student services center. Um, I've got a pro tip here. Uh, if you can, walk a student to the support service. There was a long conversation on the way to the support service, uh, a young black male not wanting to get support. Um, and we had conversations about how maybe what I've heard in the comedy club from peers of mine reinforces or supports what he's thinking, that it's a legitimate thought, but I need him to consider uh, how to ask for help and maybe show others how to ask for help. Um, and we had that conversation on the way to getting some help. Um, other ways that we're meeting students where they are is by trying to get them ready for their employer. We've done research at CCD about what job descriptions include. And so uh, you can see a list of them here. Um, and what I keep doing is trying to invent assignments. As soon as I get a skill that I think people want, we try to invent an assignment that uh, assesses that skill. We've also been using North Star badges to try and uh, upscale uh, or upskill our students on digital skills uh, and get them badges, something that they can put on their resume. We've also been doing case study work uh, to try and get students prepared for the jobs that they're interested in pursuing. Uh, and a few of the last activities we've done are things like adding a business club. We've done leadership day. We're participating in welcoming inclusion events. And uh, we're headed back to the cyber case study contest next year if we can. Um, so just a reminder that when we pay attention to our students, when we offer them opportunity, uh, they can conquer and succeed. I'm forever proud of these students and what we accomplished. And I look forward to being able to report next year that we swept it again. Uh, it's uh, a real pleasure. So I think that's where I'll stop as to what we're doing at CCD as far as uh, meeting students where they are and trying to create events that uh, support their needs. Thank you so, thank you so much, Chad. Um, Dolly, are, are you ready to talk? Sure. Hi everyone, I'm Dolly Rosenbrook. I am the department chair for business for creative industries, which is our new bachelor's program at Front Range Community College. And it's a completion uh, associates to com um, bachelor's completion program, which means that our students come from creative uh, discipline prefixes such as multimedia graphic design, recording arts, interior design, uh, CAD, it could be studio art like jewelry or painting. And then they take a core set of business courses that are created output by the CCCS um, state group, and then we pair uh, 3,000 and 4,000 level business for creative industries prefix classes to really um, allow them to have a safe arena to practice leadership skills, 
and to learn about managing creatives, project management, um, as well as creative policy. So thank you for having me here. I'm gonna share with you a little bit about what we're doing as far as meeting our students where they are at. And I have a couple pictures just to show. So let me see if I can get that in um, pulled up for you. Just one second. Let's see. Okay. Great. Are you able to see this? Okay. So um, one of the th very first things that I did was um, engaging myself in leadership um, training. So I don't know if you're aware, but the uh, state of Colorado has a um, Colorado creative agency that's uh, created by Governor Polis and is funded through the state. We have a new uh, head of that agency, Josh Blanchard. And so I really identified that as my first goal for partnership. And so we, this is Josh here. Um, we had him come and present at our launch parties for our student um, students. We had three launch parties to launch the degree program. And the goal is to um, really like provide funding to bolster the creative economy because it's been identified how important the creative economy um, and the creative aspects of our state are in driving the overall economic um, success of, of our state. So really bringing him in was a great step. I also um, am doing a year long leadership arts training program where it's through the Colorado Business um, Committee for the Arts. And what we do there is we go and visit each different venue throughout the Denver metro area, such as the Denver Performing Arts Center um, or 40 West uh, Colfax, um, the various different arts districts. And so it's a huge networking opportunity for me to really connect with professionals um, in creative industries across the state. So that was a second step. Um, this is an image of the Longmont um, Creative Arts District leadership. And so they we partnered with them and they are they hosted a creative retreat, which was their inaugural creative retreat. This is a flyer for it. We invited our students from our Business for Creative Industries program to attend that. And also community members from the um, Longmont uh, area were there. I presented on the new degree program to make those community members aware of that. We invited them to come to us with their experience um, so that we could look at, you know, awarding prior learning for their credit outside of um, a college institution setting to give them credit for what they already know. We worked with them at this retreat, which was really well attended, uh, to set goals. It was the beginning of the year. What kind of goals did they have for their creative um, industries? Was it a new product that they were gonna create? Or was it more of like a skeleton business plan that they really needed to modify and flush out? And then we invite, we're gonna invite them to come back to Front Range where we're going to, again, pair them with existing students um, to really try to build and bolster that networking in the community where they are because that community connection we've identified um, is something that's so vital that students just really need to tap into early and really partner with that setting throughout. Um, another situation that we have coming up is the West Staff Creative Vitality Summit. And West Staff um, is another partnership that I made through the community, um, the Committee for the Arts. And so again, for this one, Front Range is acting as a sponsor. We're going to invite our students to come to that. And just really, again, starting the networking early, but also that through that partnership, inviting the community into Front Range and to our new bachelor's program. So what we found was in interviewing our industry partners that there is just such a, um, a, you know, it's just so important for the students to have that bachelor's degree. It actually raises their resume to the top of the stack a lot of times when they're being reviewed for job opportunities. Um, whereas if they just had the associate's level degree, they may not make it to that to that even previewing round. So um, really it's almost like we've, we're creating a pipeline in a way 
to provide and to connect with these state agencies and art districts to provide um, a reciprocal kind of synergistic partnership for continued education um, around our creative arts and um, just strengthening that, that those business aspects. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Any, and I'll be glad to take questions in a minute. So if that's where we're at. <laughs> okay. So Jorge, I haven't heard back from him. We hope everything, everything, you know, we're, we're hoping everything is fine. Um, what I can do is, is I hate to tell somebody else's story, but I will I will talk a little bit uh, about it. So Jorge called up and he was the inspiration. He was he was the inspiration for this uh, for this session. And I'm going to screen share real quick because I went, OK, let me look him up real quick. Um, Jorge is from Morgan Community College. Does anybody here know where Morgan Community College is? And you can get on mic or you can say it in chat. I'll give you a hint. It's in Colorado. Where in Colorado is it? <laughs> Fort Morgan. David, that's so great. And you're from Wyoming. So that's it. <laughs> so it's great that a Wyoming person got that. Fort Morgan is northern. It, it, it's, it's, it's northern Colorado. It's going towards, um, uh, going towards the, the Nebraska border. And um, I'm sh I'm screen <laughs> I'm, sh I'm sharing the screen so you can see it. So um, this is, is Jorge, and what's really important here, I think, what it says: multicultural entrepreneur business faculty. So just to talk, um, just to talk about that a little bit. I'm pulling the I, I'm I'm pulling the, up the screen that has their cultural entrepreneurship program. Now, now look at this. It's saying calling all Spanish and Somali and Somali speaking um, entrepreneurs. So, if you were in a session with us a little bit earlier today, uh, the one right beforehand, we were talking about multilingual students. Here's an example that the that the entre that they're looking for people, not just who speak English but who speaks Somali or Spanish. Now, um, Fort Morgan um, Fort Morgan has a pretty big Somali population and uh, a Somali immigrant population and and it also and it also has a very big and vibrant Latinx community. So what Jorge has been doing <laughs> is building up a program, where, where look, student, students who, who, you know, English might be their second or their third language, or, or it could even be their fourth language, can um, find things that are responsive and relevant and that programs are even developed for this. Now, the, the thing that I'm going to say, the real story that um, Jorge gave it when he, in, we did a phone call and he said he wanted to present here at ELK. He, he told his story about meeting students where they were. And the two ways that he did that is he went to a, a local um, Spanish radio station and he's been doing a, a business in Spanish um, program <laughs> where he can talk about multicultural entrepreneurship and, and he approached the radio station to do that. And so um, I'm going to ask uh, I'm going to ask people really quickly, and you can type in chat or you can get onto the mic. Um, how many people are are teaching or living in rural areas? And you can just put yes, a Y for yes if you're in a rural area, or an N if you're not in a rural area. I mean, we highlighted Chuck. He's in Denver. <laughs> he's not. In a rural, he, he's not in in what's considered a rural area. And, and the reason why I'm asking people, you know, type type Y if you're in a rural area, or N if you're if you're not in a rural area, um, and Kath, thank you. <laughs> um, the reason the reason I'm saying this is because I used to teach at Otero College, and Otero College, <laughs> Amy, yes and no. Oh yeah, you're at Penn State. So state college, not considered a rural area. Then you go 10 miles and everything 
and, and everything starts becoming rural um, at Penn State. Absolutely. Um, I used to teach at Otero College, and that's in La Junta. Um, and it's going towards the border uh, with New Mexico between Colorado. And it's a rural area. Radio is so important in rural areas. Um, I I taught sports marketing and they would pull me to come and and just come on to a radio show to talk about to talk about sports marketing. So what Jorge went and did was he contacted uh, he contacted the radio station knowing that the Latinx community um, listens to Spanish radio. So he met students where they lived and even started a program that, you know, talked about business and, and I don't want to call it advertising, but talked about business and was able to connect the Latinx community um, through radio with the college and letting the students know and letting the students know that they belong there. Um, I wish he was here so he could tell more, but I, I just wanted I just wanted to say that how he decided that um, the radio a Spanish radio station would be how he reached out for um, to his students and was relevant and responsive. So um, I think the next question is for um, a discussion of this is um, everybody, um, what questions do you have? from like, um, from Chuck or Dolly. I actually thought of a couple of other things to mention yes, when please, you were talking. Please, <laughs> please, please, please so, have time. Um, one of the things that I did not mention was that the, our bachelor's program is specifically geared for adult learners. And we realized that adult learners are working adults, like maybe working two jobs. They have families, other obligations. So that was something that was really important um, as far as providing flexible um, scheduling. So all the courses are online. They're in a seven week format so that it's more manageable. They can focus on maybe one or two seven week classes at a time rather than a full load of like um, four or five. And so as we're making these partnerships with these um, events, we know that adult learners want to have that opportunity to connect outside of the classroom and build that networking. So we're recording these events. So those that are in rural areas that cannot attend are provided with um, ways to engage outside of um, the classroom as well. And then what we started with the Longmont Chamber, I didn't mention this, is simply because that's the center of our um, areas that we serve. But we do have plans to branch out to uh, Larimer as well as to Adams County. And the unique thing about Longmont is that we have a Longmont Student Chamber Network that branches out of our business department. And one of our alumni, Genevieve Clayton, has a very successful market research uh, business in Longmont, and she heads up the Student Chamber Network. And they're actually aligning their programming with our learning criteria for our courses so that it can reciprocate and um, support um, by providing, uh, providing real like panels for students to go and ask questions um, or to virtually uh, join in. And that chamber, that uh, Creative Vitality Summit by West Staff is actually virtual as well. So it's really important that, you know, not only we're connecting, but we're also providing, um, you know, a remote option for, for those students who can't be in person. And, and Kath just asked a question, and I think you answered it. <laughs> I, so Kath yeah, <laughs> so they can, they can, so yes, Kath, they can fully achieve the degree remotely. So and, really, and, you... and and so I I'm I'm going I'm going to share when Do, Do, while Dolly's been talking about the creative industries she hasn't mentioned she has been the impetus at Front Range Community College for the Adult Learning and Design Academy. So I'm just going to pull this up real quickly because and this is in the program. Um, this is one of our uh, instructors, Levi. This this is the infamous D2L widget. Does everybody, anybody who has a D2L, do you just love the widget? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to make you answer. But I, I'm just scrolling through here just because I want you to see 
um, things like tips for success. So Dolly has been a really big proponent at Front Range Community College for methods for earning credits for what you already know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of prior learning assessment, again, meeting students with what, what they know, um, where they are. And Chuck at CCD, I've heard that CCD describes prior learning assessment as momentum credit. Hmm. And uh, yeah, we've changed the title to calling it a uh, momentum credit uh, and uh, are working on partnerships with the uh, Denver Public Schools in order to uh, help students get prior learning for business communications, for example. They complete an internship uh, and if they can complete the internship uh, and demonstrate their business professional or a business communication, then uh, hopefully we can attach the idea of three credits for the business con class. And and I have to say kudos to whoever whoever started calling it momentum credit. I mean, for for me, just hearing that, <laughs> I I could get I could get students, you know, I could get students like revved up just for that. Like this is your momentum credit. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I just love I I just love that that they're calling it that. Yeah. I think um, it is, you know, one of the things to do is sort of dismantle the ivory tower. And mm. uh, the ivory tower lives for words that harm, uh, you know, just the title adjunct faculty. The first time I heard it, I asked, like, when is it going to heal? Um, and can we do a benefit for whatever adjunct faculty means? It sounds terrible. Uh, <laughs> and. Nice. In my experience, I'm a comedian uh, and lived life on the road uh, and very much felt what I think American society was feeling about higher education, uh, that, uh, you know, it wasn't focused on job skills. Uh, it's a lot of money for what kind of return on investment. Um, and I notice in academics, we don't ask questions like return on investment. Uh, that's, or we don't, we, there can be a sneer when the words customer service come up. Um, and I think it's important for us to sort of dismantle those uh, habits. Uh, it's not a four year school. Our students are not on a campus, they're not staying in a dorm, they don't have a meal plan. Uh, they, go from job to job and uh, they support their family. Uh, they've got, you know, real life to do and that, then they can come to class. And I think it's very important for faculty to uh, understand what, what the difference between what a student experience is for community college versus what it's like to go to their four year. And I often seem to encounter faculty administrators that want to punish our students in the same way their four-year professor, that person in their doctoral program that created the worst assignments and blah, blah, blah. And I kind of have to push back and go, it's intro to business. It, it's not your doctorate program. And there's no, like, if you hated the punishment that you got, what, why on earth do you feel the need to repeat it to people? Uh, uh, but that, that's sort of, I'll get off my soapbox. I'm too heavy. No, to stand no, no. It, I agree. Uh, I agree it, with Chuck. It, and I think that um, the verbiage that we use, sometimes we're in this bubble where we think it, we understand our all of our acronyms. It's academic, you know, professors, but the students don't really. So I really do like that momentum credit. And really, ultimately, what our, our adult learners are after is efficiency and achieving from point A to point B their education goals and their concern is time and how much is it going to cost and so what we do is we greet them at the door with um, the prior learning is we're still calling it prior learning or credit for prior um, learning and so for an example I have a story I can share of uh, one of our star students from BCI so far his name's Will Walker and he uh, has an extensive dance, hip hop dance background. Um, he, you know, he instructs dance professionally, but he also does graphic design. And so he came to me and said, you know, I've been doing freelance graphic design for 10 years and I would love to go into this business for creative industries program to help me learn the business skills so that I can launch 
my own professional dance um, academy. And so we looked at his work that he's done over the years in Photoshop and Illustrator, pr creating, um, you know, promotion materials for his business, um, for freelance clients. And rather than him engaging and re paying to retake these intro level design classes, which his work already demonstrates that he's met the competencies, he was able to receive, um, I think he, he got like seven, almost 20 credits of uh, credit for prior learning, which then got him to, you know, a lot further along in the program. So when a student pays for credit for prior learning, it's significantly less cost than the actual course. So it saves money and it saves time. And it's just really about also, uh, you know, bringing our faculty up to the awareness, like what Chuck's saying, that learning can happen outside of the classroom. And it does. And it does for the types of students that we have in our community college classrooms, um, because they're out there already earning a living in an industry. So how do we welcome them back and acknowledge that learning um, and help them get to their goals? So. And, and, and like I said, Dolly, has, Dolly has so many great stories and I'm just going to, like I said, this is, this is the widget, love it, hate it, D2L widget um, that pops up for students when they come here. Um, this is Dolly, Dolly has also been our per, you know, Dolly has been our person when it comes, when it comes to um, basic, basically just trying to get prior learning for students and also having us to having us design um having us design things for for students and and what i'm just pulling a, a, up here this is we have something called the highway program <laughs> highway maintenance management yeah yes and and lots of our students are prior learning these these are the colorado department of transportation people that you see um, on the side of the highways and ours is fully online so we get students from this is an associate's degree from across the U.S. because we're like the only online program for this and those those students when we were doing learning design for those students um, they were taking things online they had to be able to download things on phones and also print things off because um, I don't know about the state you're in, but in Colorado, there are lots of places where there is no cell service. And, and, and so our students in this online course had to think about how can I get how can I get the content and the material and how can I work on things if I'm if I'm at, in an area for a day or two that just doesn't that does not get um that does not have Wi-Fi that can't get cell service. Mm -hmm. So, so, <laughs> so meeting our students isn't just about meeting them. It's also about pulling down those barriers that we can, we can help to remove. Um, and so actually Don Strange, he's been working in Texas for um, their department of transportation for, for years, like has 20 plus years of leadership management, um, supervisorial, uh, experience. And as you may know, Department of Transportation has um, loads of training and leadership um, programming that he's already completed. And for him to advance in his job, he simply needed a bachelor's degree. And so he actually left Front Range because we didn't have a bachelor's degree that was a fit for him. Um, but then now he's returned now that we have this business for creative industries program. So although he wasn't one of the uh, the typical the mold that we initially created the program for, he's seen the value in this bachelor's program that will allow him to advance in his career um, because of all the different business and management and marketing courses that are paired within it. So that's his wheelhouse. Um, and then, you know, create, you have to have creative solutions for when you're out <laughs> in the field in the highway program. Um, so he really does bring a different uh, type of, um, of insight to our student cohort. And he'll probably, he may very well be one of our first graduates because he's gotten a lot of credit for prior learning for those higher level management courses and experience that he's had, so. And and, and I will do this. 
I will do this really quickly. And I apologize to people who came to our multilingual learner um, session earlier, because I'm just going to run through a little bit about that as an example of kind of meeting students where they are or where they would like to be. Again, this is in the BCI program. Sorry that we're talking so much about the BCI program. Uh, Chuck, talk about business at CCD. Jump in at any point in time. Um, but the, in in this program, we've we've added some things in Arabic because we have a student who wants to create to create um, jewelry um, that's in the in the Arabic language. Uh, I'll go really quickly, but um, what we what we use is this open educational research uh, um, resource called Bootcamp Bootleg. It's in English. It's from the University of Stanford. Well, um, we wanted to go ahead and and see how we could boost linguistic capital, cultural capital, and and embrace the, the students, community, um, cultural wealth. Um, and one of, one of our friends of our program was able to go and find um, similar material in Arabic on design thinking. Um, here, here, this is it in Arabic. And Arabic goes from right to left <laughs> instead of English, English and instead of English um, where we go left, left to right. So that's the example of, of us putting it in there so that um, students would be able to use that kind of vocabulary. Um, this is called translanguaging when you teach primarily in English, but then you add things, supplementals in a language other than English. So this was one of our examples of meeting students where they are, because this is um, one of our students who is a jewelry maker um, has looked at the market and has seen has, has seen the, the Arabic jewelry that's available online and and the quality and she wants to uh, she wants to go ahead and, um, and and do this as her business. So us um, putting in some trans languaging is part of looking to be culturally um, responsive and culturally relevant. Another way that we're doing this is through COIL, which is um, focused on creating global um, global learning communities. And so that's one of the pillars of our bachelor's program is uh, strengthening global design and making our students more aware. And so the COIL program, which you, I'm not sure if you're aware of, partners programs like in, in our, you know, at our institution at Front Range with programs that have similar course offerings across the country, across the United States, I mean, across the country, but also with um, other countries as well. So like in Mexico, for example, La Nortenia um, Universidad of La Nortenia, we're partnering there, they have a marketing program. And so as our program continues to, um, to grow in the curriculum, we, we like to identify these similar courses and then that allows the faculty to partner with the faculty in Mexico, for example, where they can identify, maybe they just identify like a singular project that they then get together. Um, the students could even pair up and do like a kind of partner group project, uh, but it really allows them to see the similarities in what they're learning, but also to identify the differences and where those those points may vary based on on the culture. So um, another aspect of that. So, so one way, yes, or, one way we've uh, tried to accommodate or gain interest from our international students uh, in our case studies, uh, I've been using. Uh, I'm going to say it, and this uh, Chat GPT. Who knew it was going to come up during this <laughs> session? Um, so I've been using Chat GPT to invent case studies about uh, to help me fictionalize some Colorado businesses, but that meet the ideas that I'm trying to get across. So, so the companies work in industries like space, uh, outdoor tourism. Uh, whatever industries I think the students need exposure to, especially things like renewable energy. And then I'm trying to pick countries uh, that they're dealing with 
that uh, match the students' backgrounds uh, so that students can hear about doing a case study where the business is involved uh, with uh, business in Mexico, uh, students from Mexico, and you can see them sort of lean forward and get more interested in the case study because it's about researching their uh, country they're interested. It may be native to their family, or it just might be Brazil that they've heard so much in class from other students who are from Brazil. So I've tried to incorporate stories from uh, the Asian Pacific region, uh, Arabic uh, and African countries. I just want throughout the case studies for students to be able to pick and choose between the case studies based on maybe interest in an industry or also just geographic location. And can they hear countries that are not the United States in the example uh, and start to research and maybe see, feel acknowledged by me. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I created these based on student population and uh, seeing folks that have interest in uh, studying different countries when it comes to global business. So, I love that. Uh, that's that's like reminds me of like the choose your own adventure books that we used to read when we were younger. You know, you're so much more excited when you are given that agency, and the students are more excited and engaged when they're given that agency over their own learning. And that's what uh, Kay and I try to encourage amongst our fa faculty in the Adult Learning Curriculum Design Academy at Front Range is really identifying areas where you can. Um, strengthen re uh, the relevant in the assignments and allow them the opportunity to, to tie assignments to maybe what they're doing in their current position or like you're saying, like with what their interests are um, because you're going to get a lot better work out of them if that's the case. And, and I, I was just going to say, I, I was, Chuck, I was looking at the Community College of Denver and I see not only is there English, but there's Arabic, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, and Vietnamese on on the website. Oh, uh, that's great. I think we're working on a new version that might be part of the updates or changes, but I will pass on the terrific feedback. Uh, oh, yeah. In, in my <laughs> classroom, if I can hear at one moment, Vietnamese, Arabic, Spanish uh, being spoken amongst all the small groups. I know that that to me is a Chuck Roy classroom. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking around, you're like, I just hear so many languages. Uh, you have entered my space. It's a safe space for you to, you know, partner up with people who are, you know, culturally from your neighborhood or culturally from around the globe. Uh, and I'll gladly put up the photo of our students winning that contest again, <laughs> um, because they really felt before we even went to the contest that our diversity was going to give us an advantage. We were up against universities. Uh, it was a historically black uh, college and university event along with minority serving institutions. Everyone else was from a university. We were the only community college. Uh, and uh, I think our students felt like because they have so many different backgrounds in their classes mm -hmm. and that the assignments, you know, challenge them to work with folks from different backgrounds and abilities, that it's what prepared them, the mo or one of the things that helped prepare them the most for uh, conquering. And so now I have at least two mentions that we swept, and there's a third. And no, uh, that's, <laughs> no, it is something to be really proud of you. And and I, and and if there were recordings of this, I, the other teams are probably going to watch your teams going like, oh, how do we compete against CCD? How do we beat the City Hawks this year? I mm. I. I am sure I'm waiting. That's a, I've already identified that as the signal uh, when we get there next year. If uh, the students are going, <laughs> I want a community college of Denver student on my team because they split them up from college to college. Oh, uh, wow. And so that's going to be the feedback I'm waiting on next year is if I <laughs> this year they were mean as hell to our students. And, you know, uh, mm. we picked up on all of the talk you can expect of how cute it is that a community college is at this event and then after the event the tone completely changed to <laughs> uh, 
what are you all doing as a community college? Yeah, yeah. How can we replicate that? <laughs> and uh, I've been walking around the office with a broom for weeks. No one will tolerate me anymore. But <laughs> no, no, it, it totally <laughs> works. Before it was like, you're so cute. Now it's going to be like, oh, the city hawks are coming. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. you, need a, <laughs> you better you need know. A hawk Hire call a in city the hawk. <laughs> yeah. So. So everybody who's attending, thank you so much for attending. Do you have questions or do you have your uh, your own stories um, about meeting people uh, as they are? You can type it in chat or you can just, uh, you know, unmute your mic. We love to hear from you. It's okay. We have lurkers today. That's fine. Lurking is learning. <laughs> it's totally <laughs> fine. So, so Dolly, any last words from you? Um, I think it's just, you know, it's for us as educators, it's just about trying new things and just constantly uh, being willing to assess and reach out to the students for follow-up for their feedback. Is it working? Um, do they have ideas of what, you know, what are they, what are their goals? Like we really need to understand who our students are that are in our classroom. And that's, that's been a challenge for us as um, we've been teaching online, especially, you know, following the pandemic where everybody's camera was off for a, a couple, you know, a while. <laughs> and you're just, you're as the facilitator, like, just like, how do I even connect with my students? How do I even know who they are? So, you know, beginning to understand who they are as early as possible is important, but then also really having a conversation with them about what their education goals are and what do they want to get out of the class and then assessing at the end to see if they did get what they their goals were out of the class and then figuring out in between, like Chuck was saying with the um, kind of choose your own adventure, like how we can't just provide them with a stagnant curriculum. In a way, the curriculum needs to be flexible and moldable to to help them get to from point A to point B. And so, as an educator, we can't we can't just operate out of our our you know our briefcase. We need to be able to pull all the tricks out and and offer that variety in learning. Um, and that's where the learning really happens. So, and and that makes it exciting. You know, it makes it more interesting as well and engaging for the students, but also for us as educators. Thanks. Chuck, last words. Sure. Uh, I hope folks walk away with the sense that it's it's going to be okay if we dismantle the ivory tower. Uh, education going to be all right if we uh, <laughs> eliminate the ivory tower. Uh, uh, as a comedian, I'll just it, it's about new material. Uh, if you're Ooh. still delivering the same old lecture, and you know you're assessing by circles on a you know on a fill out form uh it's it's time for some of the old bits to go away uh, uh and the world probably needs you to update your material i remember when i first moved here to denver how much denver comedians didn't want to hear it uh, but i could hear it from the audience we're tired of the same jokes uh and so if that's your lecture uh if if it's tired it's it's just time sorry it's a tough <laughs> news but it's, it's probably time for that thing to go and time for you to update and rethink uh, how to teach things uh, in today's modern world because uh, the customer expects it. They've got smartphones and the ability to yelp and put a rate my professor out there. And, and thank God they do because uh, uh, that's uh, probably what's going to, you know, uh, help some old ideas move on and some new ideas enter the space. <laughs> Cass, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna go have some coffee, so I'm less grumpy this uh, afternoon. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck and Dolly, thank you, thank you so much for this. Thanks, everybody. Um, everybody, see you, see you online in other sessions. Bye, bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for having us.